So you've heard all these gurus talk about real estate investing and how they've made so much money from it. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how to get started in building a property portfolio, what the numbers could look like only after a few years. And if you do this well, you could probably accelerate this in the first 12 months of 2023. So if you're interested, keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now it's very important to understand that real estate investing isn't actually for everyone. Despite it being so easy, it can cause you a lot of stress, especially if you do the wrong thing. I'm sure you've heard many horror stories with bad tenants and then, you know, things going badly, apartment buildings breaking down and then having massive construction costs, as well as not being able to find a tenant at all. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is share with my whiteboard the strategy around how you could build out a portfolio if you were starting from scratch. And if you were someone that was considering purchase a property just simply to get the advantage of the first home buyer's grant, or if you went ahead and invested that money, forgetting about the grants, what that could look like. And I'll share exactly what I mean as we go through this video. So we're here in the last couple of months of 2022, you're probably putting your plans together or just getting ready for Christmas, but you will start looking at how do I build a property portfolio in 2023? So I think it's timely that you start watching these videos, share it with your sibling or your partner to really get on the same page before the new year starts. Now the big thing that we need to focus on is the information, the knowledge, the information, the data. Most people have access to this, including yourself. You could pay for it. You could also go out and ask for it. You could do your research and figure out all the data points. However, we know for a fact that a lot of people have the same data, but they get very different results because just buying a property on its own is not simply enough for you to go out there and get the 1% life, which is financial freedom. You need someone in your corner or a group of people that are really going out and saying, well, based on our experience, we can do X, Y, and Z, which will accelerate your growth to be able to get X, Y, and Z. If you simply go and purchase your first property, what's the step after that? I'm going to share my example and why it's so important to be in the know-how Otherwise, you will miss on the opportunities. Now, the reason why we get such different results is because strategy makes up one part and experience is the other. If you haven't done this before, it's wise to get the right help. Now, that could be a buyer's agent, it could be the right mortgage brokers, but really figure out what are their expertise, what have they done, and don't be scared to ask the person that's in your team exactly what they have. If they shy away from answering that question, it's a warning sign in my book. Because at the end of the day, if you wanna work with me, you should know what I have and why I believe I can take you to point B because point B is probably similar to where I'm already at. I'm going to have the experience with what steps and roadblocks you're going to have versus someone who's not actually an investor, but is apparently helping you buy property. Like, how does that make sense? So when it comes to your first property, you're most likely questioning this. Do I go for the first home buyer's grant or do I just go ahead, invest and invest logically wherever the numbers make sense? Now, I'm going to share with you my story and then you can make up your own mind because as I've always said in my videos, I do not give you financial advice. I can give you property advice. We can look at strategies. But at the end of the day, you've got to figure out your own risk appetite. And if you need help in creating a strategy, you can always contact me. The pinned comments will have my email. So with my first property, what I did was in December 2014, I bought my first home. Now, contrary to what everyone else was doing, all of my friends were basically going and buying apartments in Sydney because they could get the first home buyer's grant. I decided I'm probably going to take a different route. Why? Because for years before that, I was just so interested in property. Yes, I'm a nerd. But I was so interested in property that I could see the growth and the trends with regional areas, metro markets. And so I decided, you know what, cash flow looks very appealing to me. I want a bit more of that cash flow and I'll get the capital growth because, hey, if I buy in the right location, I should get that as well. So what I did was I purchased a property for $190,000. It was a brick home, three bedroom house in regional New South Wales. Now at the time it rented for $235 per week. And today that bank valuation has come in at $380,000. And in eight years, I've been able to 2X basically my asset value. So 190 became 380. And now the rent is $340 per week. And in the eight years of me owning this property, I've had this property vacant for two weeks, right? And so if you really are thinking about investing and then you hear some people talk about, oh, you're gonna have bad tenants and it's gonna be such a headache, it's because they don't understand the process. If you don't understand the process, this becomes super difficult. It's the equivalent of going out there and saying, I'm gonna start playing this new board game that I've just purchased, but I'm not gonna look at the rules and I'm just gonna try and figure it out. And that is the difference between knowing someone who's played the game, they can explain it in plain English, and 
that's why you would have to have the right team. But let's continue. Now, if I had gone and listened to all of my other friends and what they were doing, I could have bought an apartment for $400,000. Now, yes, I would have definitely, you know, saved a little bit on stamp duty and got some other benefits like a $10,000 or $15,000 grant at the time. However, I would have to potentially move out. I would have cash flow issues. And now obviously, you know, after the fact, I can look back and see how much growth was in that area and those numbers in terms of rental vacancies. And it definitely was not going to be nice. So again, cash flow issues were going to be there and I was going to experience less growth. Now, again, I know these results because it's eight years later, right? And thankfully it worked out for me. But you might be on the fence sitting there saying, well, I could go down this path and I've been told all these things around, you know, this being a great area and it's going to grow long term. Well, these apartments did grow and I had a couple that I had kept on my watch list in terms of, you know, the ones I acquired back then. I've gone back to revisit what those properties would be worth today, how much they rent out for. So the juiciness is coming. Now that sort of property would be worth anywhere between 480 and 500k. So as you can see, eight years later, I've done pretty well if I had gone down that path. I would have saved on my upfront costs and I would have moved out. However, I didn't have any intentions to move out. I was only 22 and definitely couldn't take care of myself. And again, I say that with a smile on my face, but it's actually pretty depressing. But I wasn't able to take care of myself. I would still rely on my mum to cook me food and clean the house as well. So I didn't want to move. And in terms of cash flow issues, I know that area had gone through so many issues when it came to finding the right tenants. I'd always kept an eye on it just for my own learning process. I wanted to know what the alternative looked like. And in terms of the actual demand there for rentals, it's actually reduced. And why is because that property that I would have purchased was a little dated. That's not the concern. The concern was that there was so much incoming supply of units that I actually didn't know. Now, a lot of people are making this mistake even today. They get thrown around all these buzzwords around how it's such a good area. It's going to be amazing because it's close to train stations, but there's so much more to that. And the biggest factor in this was that I would have had to have more upfront cash for the one property. So all of my savings would have gone into this one property and all of my risk is concentrated on this one property. Eight years later, yes, I've made a gain, but let's look at what the alternative was. Because only two months later, I was actually able to purchase in 2015, a three bedroom brick home in regional New South Wales for $255,000 and it rented for $275 per week. So again, I didn't just decide automatically that I was gonna go buy another property. What I did was I realized that I could go down the path of buying one apartment in Sydney and it's gonna be a amazing and get the grants. But instead I decided, let me go buy two properties in two different locations in regional New South Wales. Now, looking back at this, it was two properties in regional New South Wales. Now, although these are like four to five hours away from each other, I should have gone and diversified my risk even further by looking interstate. But again, what did I know? I was 22 year old Ravi. <laughs> now that property in today's market, the bank valuation is coming at $465,000 and it currently rents for $410 per week. So with my first and second property, which I purchased for one and 255, it was a total outlay of $445,000 with the apartment only being 400, but that apartment is now worth about $500,000. However, my property one and two are now worth $845,000. So a considerable difference and has definitely allowed me to launch pad from there and build out my property portfolio so quickly. This is why I always go back to knowing your first and second property are so important that if you get that wrong, it could be the difference between building a portfolio out in five years compared to about 12 or 13 years. Now, in this case, after the fact, it's pretty obvious. It was no point me going for a property simply because I was going to get some upfront grants and I get to move out for a little bit only to then move in back with parents. So in this case, I'm definitely proud of the fact that I made this move, but it could be something you learn from because trust me, this happened eight years ago to me and it's still happening today, which blows my mind given how much information is out there. People are still making the same mistakes. So now that we've looked at an example of whether we buy our own place or invest logically, let's go down the path of investing logically and see how we build out this property portfolio fast and efficiently. So let's say we purchase our first property in Feb 2023 and we purchased that for $380,000 in today's market. It would probably rent for 420 to 430 and the upfront cost for this would be about 75,000 to $80,000. Now if you want a detailed breakdown of how much of a deposit you need to actually purchase something like this including all your upfront costs, definitely go check out this video. It helps just break it all down for you especially if you're getting started. Now the reason I use this number of $380,000 is because our average deal size at Search Property the Buyers Agency is about $380,000. $86,000. So these numbers are fairly average of what we would do. Now, yesterday we secured something for 358 and the week before that we secured something for 412. It just depends on our client's strategy as well as what we're trying to do with the budgets they have and their borrowing capacity. If you need help, again, pinned comment, email me and we'll be sure to get you on the right track.
So we've gone ahead and we've purchased our first property. 12 months later, we have the savings plus the equity from the first property to be able to go and purchase our second one. The first property is probably worth $410,000. And I think that's quite conservative, especially based on the trends that we've been seeing in the areas we're buying. And then we're looking at buying another property for a similar sort of amount. Again, we can only look at averages. Some properties will be less, some properties will be higher, but as long as we're working with an adaptive mindset, we'll be able to move fairly quickly. Now I know there's a few assumptions here is that you've got the borrowing capacity to actually purchase, but also that you actually have the upfront cash to be able to do something like this. Now you could definitely go down the path of home guarantors with your parents as well, which allows you to use the equity from your parents' property to act as a deposit on your investment property. And this way you're not actually having to use any of your own savings if you don't have any, but again, it's probably wise to consult with people that know how this works. Now the ultimate goal when building out a portfolio, I like to use very round numbers. Now $100,000 a year is pretty much the average sort of number that gets used most often when people are filling out forms to contact me. So I decided how do we get to 100k and let's keep it very simple, very basic maths. And in that case, we need $2 million worth of net assets to be able to give us at a 5% return $100,000 a year. Now that would be if we were looking at say the cash flow element, right? If we had $2 million worth of assets like property, and then it was able to give us a 5% yield net yield after all of our costs, we'd end up on $100,000 passive income, which is fantastic. Now in this case, obviously you've gone out and purchased your property, you've got debt on there. So you're probably not realizing a $100,000 worth of cash flow. But what you are doing is you're allowing that machine to grow at 5%. Because conservatively, if we look at property and we look at historical data, it's outperformed 5% every single year. But in this case, if we use the 5% number, that means we would be having $100,000 worth of equity compounding every single year. And the best part is it would be tax-free because the machine keeps on growing and at 5% every year for 20 years, it would be worth $5.3 million. So the $2 million worth of assets that you own would now be worth 5.3 million. And that would be in 20 years. Now there are so many strategies I can cover off, so many tactics as to how you can reduce your debt quickly. You can definitely go check out this video where I've gone ahead, broken down some real good tactics of how to reduce your debt. But what you're looking at doing is saying, how do I use the bank's money to be able to purchase property and then have the tenants pay off my debt? That is effectively the whole game with real estate investing. And a couple of key points I have here is look at fundamentals. Don't just go for the nice looking property that looks great with artist impressions because it's an off the plan property. Look at the fundamentals. Is there demand in this area? Is there incoming supply? And if there is, how much of that can be absorbed by the current market and the future population as well? If this is not making sense and you don't know where to start, you would need to have the right team with you. And that is why you only focus on logical buying. As I've said in videos before, logic and emotions need to stay very far away when investing in real estate. Treat it like a business. And if you can, you will get amazing results. But again, if this is your first time, you can't help but have those emotions kick in. Most of our clients that come to us are purchasing their first property with the intention to go, hey, I'd like to build a property portfolio in like five years. They tend to go from one property to about three or four within the first 18 months. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and understood a little bit more around my own story when I had to face a similar dilemma. Although a different time, the principles still apply even today. If you guys have, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and share this with your partner or with your sibling that you wanna get started, get started today. If you're interested in more content, definitely subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.